Hi, it's Nell and welcome to my garden. Today I'm going to be planting a shrub. This is a dwarf olive. The variety is Lil Ollie and I'm going to show you how to do it. I've been planting shrubs, trees, perennials for years and years and years and shrubs and trees are the backbone of the garden. They provide interest. They sort of set the tone and the stage for what the garden is, is going to be and the feel of the garden and you want to give them a good start in life. So let's head on over to the garden and I'm going to show you how I plant this beauty. So we took all the plants out of this bed in the fall and really loosened up the soil so it already has a good start. And this is where this plant is going to go. It gets about four to six by four to six, so that gives it um, an, enough room away from the edge of the house. And there's a downspout there. I don't want it right under it. And as you can see, the soil is easy to easy to work. So what you want to do is you want to dig the hole twice as wide as it is deep. The root wall can just touch the bottom of the hole. You can just kind of work the soil a little bit on the, bo on the bottom to make sure it hits, it's going to drain, but you want it to be wider than the root wall by at least twice. So I went ahead and I filled the hole with water because it's very dry. I'm in Tucson, Arizona, in case you don't follow me. <laughs> there is, um, hasn't been any rain for at least a month and a half or two months, so the soil's very dry. If you're someplace where it rains quite often and the soil is wet, you don't need to do this step. But I also want to do it because it's going gonna, it's gonna to loosen the soil on the bottom a little bit too because it was still pretty hard. So I want to loosen that, even though I don't need to dig it any deeper, I just want to loosen it a little bit, but it's nice and wide, so that's fine. And uh, the thing about shrubs is they usually have a pretty scrappy root system. They have a pretty strong root system, so they can, um, they can work their way through the soil, but you definitely want to give them some help to start. And as you can see, I'm planting this shrub in a one gallon pot. The reason why I'm doing that is because um, this one is going to grow pretty fast in the heat, so I didn't worry too much about getting a five gallon plant. And also the bigger the plant, the bigger the hole you have to dig and um, the more expensive it is. But I generally liked buying shrubs for my clients in five gallon because that just gave it um, a better and bigger start. But for me, it's just fine because I don't want this shrub to get too much over four feet. So it's going to grow. It's going to grow beautifully in all this warmth. It's interesting because the water is still draining in this hole. Whereas the hole that I dug for the dwarf myrtle is already fully drained out. Okay, well, I'm going to plant the myrtle and then I will come back to show you how I'm going to plant the olive. And what's very important when you go to plant a shrub is you want to make sure it's well watered. You don't want to plant a shrub that's dry or stressed in any way. So give it a good, a good thorough watering before you plant. Okay, so I got the myrtle planted and the water is drained here. So what I'm going to do is just loosen it a little bit on the bottom because it was pretty stubborn. So it's just that the soil, you know, the soil hasn't been worked in a long time and it's really dry. And it's pretty hard over here. It was so easy to dig the other hole. So I just want to make sure that it's going to be nice and free draining, which it take too long to drain for, for, for being so dry. It took about 10 minutes, so that's not too bad. 
And what I'll do is I'll take out any big rocks and any more roots too. I've already taken out a lot, but I'm going to take out just a little more of this soil so that I can put in some nice compost. But that, that gets the bottom nice and loose now. And this dwarf olive, like other olives, is drought tolerant, but it does need water to get established. So that's why I chose it, because I'm in a hot, dry climate. This plant is tightly rooted in this pot. As I said, shrubs have a pretty extensive root system. So I'm going to loosen it gently by doing this. I'm just going to step on it gently. I'm not going to jump up and down like a pogo stick, but just uh, turn it around a few times so it it gets a little bit loose, and that's the way that I have done it when things are a little bit stubborn about coming out of the pot. And now I should be able to just, oh yeah, I can just lift it right out of the pot just like that. And I'm going to loosen up the, the root ball here a bit. First of all, I'm gonna take the tag off. It's a bit distracting. Okay, so I have the root ball off. I mean, I, I mean the tag off. Oh, hello, little hummingbird. Oh, oh, over there at the salvia. Okay, so I have the tag off and I'm just gonna loosen the root ball a little bit just to make it easier for those roots to spread. Yeah, it's a little tight, so I wanna kind of give it a massage around the sides too. But I, I definitely loosened it on the bottom so it can um, spread, its, spread its roots and grow. Now I'm gonna get it in the hole, and this is sort of a flatter side here, so I want that to be the back. There we go. Gonna have to raise it up. I'm gonna have to put about an inch or two of soil in the bottom to raise it up a bit. That happens sometimes. So um, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna start to fill in with the native soil, alternating with compost. So ultimately what I'm gonna have is like two thirds of the native soil and about a third of the local organic compost in the hole. So I put a good amount of the native soil in and some compost. You want to be careful not to put too much compost in. You want more native soil than the compost. You know, the compost is just to amend it. And then I watered it. And now I'm going to top it off with the native soil. And then when it's, um, oh, there's my cat Riley. <laughs> then when it's like an inch, an inch to go, I'm going to put some worm compost on the top and then put some more native soil on top of that okay so there's little ollie all planted in got the worm compost a little more compost on top i watered it in well and now all it has to do is grow i will water it thoroughly probably every three days uh, just to get it established here before the drip gets on it and when the drip gets done and I get the nice layer of compost on the top and I get the agave planted and I get the driftwood and a little bit of garden ornamentation in here, I will show you this bed. This is my pyracantha. It just put out a big bloom, so it's setting berries. It's a beautiful shrub. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that spring and fall are great times to plant shrubs. The days are warm, but the evenings are cool, so the plants can really settle in beautifully. And fall is actually the best time to plant shrubs and trees. You just have to make sure it's enough time before the first frost hits, so the plants can really settle in. But the roots um, settle in beautifully, and then come spring, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, beautiful new spring growth. And I like to plant in spring because the selection is good. It's really nice and fresh. Everything has come in and it hasn't gotten too hot yet. You can plant in the summer in the heat. It'll just be a little bit harder for the plant to settle in. You will need to water it more. 
in those warm, hot days. I'll do the ending over here because at least the Barber Cars provide some color. Oh, I have allergies today. My nose has been dripping in my eyes. Things are blooming here in the desert. So to plant a shrub successfully, you have to make sure you have the right shrub in the right spot, the right exposure. The soil is well worked. You, you want to make sure that the shrub is watered before you plant it. You want to dig the hole twice as wide as deep. You want to water it in well, put in some compost. I put in worm compost. You can put in an all-purpose fertilizer if you'd like. Then cover it up with, with the native soil, a lot of the native soil. Top it with a little compost and some worm compost and your shrub will do fabulously. And don't forget to water it in really well. So I hope you have found this video about planting a shrub to be helpful. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. Now let's get out in the garden and make our worlds a more beautiful place. I have a lot more videos coming your way, so be sure and come back. Ooh, and if you'd like, be sure and check the blog post that goes along with this video. The link will be in the description box down below. Thank you, and I will see you, or you'll see me, in the next video. Bye.